Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will enter a loan payment adjusting entry to break out the short term and long term portion of the loans payable within QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course, which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are in the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to be breaking out the short term and long term portion of the loans payable. In order to do that, let's first take a look at the short term and long term portion by going to the reports on the left side and we're going to open up the balance sheet. So we'll select the balance sheet and then we're going to change the date range. We have the month of January and February that we were working on. We're going to be entering these adjusting entries as of the end of the second month of February. That then will be our cutoff date. I'm going to make the range for the full two months, which is 010121 to 02 uh, 28 to 1. So it's going to be the for the full range here. This will be a point in time, but of course, we want to be able to drill down on the numbers and see the full two months of activity as we do so. So then we will run that report. So here is the report that we have run. And we're going to scroll down here and see what we have. We're looking for the loans payable account down here. We've got the loans payable. We're in the liabilities section. Remember that the loans payable is different from the accounts payable and that it's typically more of a long-term loan. So accounts payable being due within 30 to 60 days, being normal part of operations. Loans payable typically being due for a longer period of time and often having interest uh, charged to it. Now note that although the loan is a long period of time, it may not be a long-term loan. It may still be short-term in terms of the current versus long-term portion because uh, 60 days or 30 days is really what accounts payable are normal business processes for normal purchases. Uh, but the, the loan could be something for like three months or six months and still be under the threshold of one year in order to be current. It's also possible for us to have different loans. So the loans can be a little bit tricky when we do these adjusting entries. Some companies will have a lot of loans on the books and our question is, do we want to break out the loans in separate accounts? Do we want to group them together as we have done here? All into one account. This one account has multiple loans in it. And then try to break out the short term and long term portion. That in essence is what we're going to be doing in this loan process. Or do we want to break those loans out into different loans? It's also possible we have to look at the terms of each and every loan really too. Because the loan could be financed in, in a way that... Um, like a most finance would be for like a car or something or a, or a mortgage type loan where we pay off some of the interest and principal with equal monthly payments but it's very common for other loans too to have different types of formats it might be that we're going to take a loan out and not pay interest or principal until the end of the loan and we we have different types of formats of the loan so we'll go over some of those issues as we take a look at this note what we told basically the bookkeeping department one way we can deal with this is to say bookkeeping department uh, or accounting department, whoever's actually recording the loan when the loan was taken out, might be easier for you just to have one loan account. You put that loan into this one loan account, and then we're going to go in and adjust it for the short term and long term portion, which could differ after every payment. It could, it could differ after every payment and as time passes. So let's take a look at the activity. Here's the 74878. Uh, and we could see that it started, if we look at the detail here, uh, we started with the beginning balance of 22. Then we took out another 50. Then we made a couple payments here. And then we took out another 5,000 to increase the loan. So the loan, we owed 22. Then we increased the loan by 50,000. And then we made a payment, bringing it down. And then we took out another loan of 5,000. So our first question when looking at detail like this is, well, are, are these all the same loan? Are they different loans? Did we just, you know, adjust in terms of the one loan? Is it some kind of line of credit? We'd have to get the, the policies to back up this information. We're going to say that this is uh, 50, uh, th these two loans are the same. The $72,000 loan is in essence one loan. And this second loan we're going to say is another loan. That's the loan we took out on equipment. So we're going to look at the terms for this loan. The second loan first, the shorter one. 
and figure out what to do with it in terms of short-term and long-term portions. And then we'll go back uh, and, and adjust this loan, which is a bit more complex, is a bit bigger loan. So first we'll take a look at this loan and just look at the terms of it. And oftentimes what we need to, to make the loan make sense is an amortization schedule. So we're going to actually put together an amortization schedule. This will be a simplified amortization schedule uh, within Excel here. And then this will lead us into the next amortization schedule we will have for a more complex type of loan. Note when you have a loan, you're typically going to have uh, the loan amount, the interest rate, the number of payments, and then they might give you the amount due, in this case at the end of the loan, or the number amount of payment amount due. In this case, we're going to say that the loan, and, and by doing that, what we don't have typically is an amortization table a lot of times. And we might want to put that together and say, well, what's going to happen over time in terms of the table? So what we're going to do um, is take this information and uh, make it a table out of it and make some uh, look at it in terms of a table. And then we'll use that to make our adjusting journal entry. So here's our, our loan terms. So we would just take this from the loan document, putting it into our Excel sheet. Here's our loan, 5,000 months, six months, rate is 6%. Now we're going to assume this loan's a bit different than a normal like car loan or a mortgage loan. It's going to be more like a business loan where we said, hey, we're going to take out 5,000. We'll pay you back in six months. We need the money now. I don't want to pay monthly payments. I want to, I want to use it until the end of the time period and then we'll pay you back at the end and they're going to say okay well you pay us five thousand back plus the interest of six percent as of the end of the time period which means that we're going to have to pay back the principal here plus the six percent interest at the end now first off right away we can tell that this is all going to be short term because it's only for six months and it's not it's not for over a year so the entire loan is going to be a short-term loan so we know that right off the bat but there is this idea of the fact that we're going to have to pay more than 5000 at the end. And so let's calculate what that interest is and discuss whether or not we should put 5000 into the current portion or what we're actually going to pay within six months and how that, uh, how that plays out. So we're going to calculate the future payment. I'm going to use a, an Excel formula in order to do this. And then we'll do this with a table. So this is, uh, you don't have to know this Excel formula, but just some added information if you want to take a look at it couple ways we can do that we want to know what the future payment is going to be so we've got 5,000 loan six months and then interest rate is six percent and we're not going to pay any of it interest or principal till the end so what we want to know is the future value uh, what's going to what's going to be worth at the end what we're going to have to pay in essence we could use a couple different formulas I'm going to go to the formula tab up here and you can use this insert functions that could help out and we're, what we want is a future payment or future value we should call it that's going to be the FV value so I'm going to select that and it'll give us a nice little uh, input box here and we could say that uh, we just filled out the box this is going to be the rate so I'm going to take that rate now the tricky thing is that that rate is a yearly rate and we, we really want to make it a monthly rate so I'm going to take that rate and divide it by 12 that's kind of the trickiest thing to dealing with interest for most people because um, when we see an interest rate, we just don't really totally understand that the interest rate really means a year. Typically, if no one says anything about an interest rate, they say the mortgage rate is 5%. It means 5% a year. And we only want to break it down to a period interest rate, which is a monthly period. So we have to take that yearly rate and divide it by 12. And then we're going to say the numbers of periods. We're just going to say is 6 here. And then we've got the payments. Now the payments, we're actually going to say there are there are no payments during those six periods. That's a bit tricky with this this type of calculation because there's what this same calculation will be used when we have annuity payments, and that's why we have um, the zero there. What we do have is the present value then, and these two aren't always there depending on the type of calculation. That's why they're not bolded, but in this calculation we need it. So the present value is what it's worth today. This is how much. Um, it is today 5,000 and if we have that information note that you have this little box down here that'll tell you what you, each of these say we're gonna say that that is it we're gonna say okay and then it'll give us the amount that we'll have to pay so we got the $5,000 loan we got 5,000 today we're gonna have to pay back after six months 5,152 I'm gonna make this a positive number by just putting a negative in front of the F so I'm gonna put a negative that just means take that multiply times negative one and that'll flip the sign 
So here's our number of payments. Now for us, there's a couple issues here. One is, you know, is this short term or long term? It's all short term. And then because it's only six months and not over 12 months. And two, what do we do with this interest amount? Do we put the short term? I mean, we're going to have to pay 5,152 in the, in this time period. And, um, so do I, do I put that in short term or do I put the 5,000? And note, we're going to, we're going to use probably the, the 5,000 because we don't yet owe uh, the 152 that's going to be kind of like rent it's kind of like rent on the money so even though we're going to pay 5152 it's not a liability at this point in time because time has not passed the six months hasn't happened yet so that would be like prepaying our rent that would be like paying the interest or saying we owe the interest before we lived in the home this would be like saying if we put the 5 uh, 152 it would be like saying we owe the 152 before we used the money now we're gonna we're gonna put the same information into an amortization table and get to that same number one to recalculate it just so we can see how that uh, amortization table works and two we're gonna need this later when we calculate the interest amount and then three it'll look better and this will give us a little idea of how different loans work and we'll we'll be able to compare and contrast this when we do a more complex loan uh, that's more similar to like a, a loan payment that we pay monthly. So here we're going to say there's going to be six, there's going to be six time periods and we usually call those payment amounts, but there's no payments. We're not going to make any payments in this particular loan till the end. So the payments are really zero. These are, these are really payments, probably not the best term of it, but we're going to use the same term because we're going to use that term when we look at a loan that has regular monthly payments. And then we're going to say that the interest amount is going to be the amount that uh, we're going to have to owe or increase in interest every uh every time period so the interest will be calculated as we have the 5000 up here 5000 principal times 6% 0.06 that would be 300 a year because that interest rate is per year if i want to break it down to a month divide by 12 that's the 25 when we did this calculation note what they in essence did there they took the 0.06 6% divided by 12 got the interest rate which is really small which is why we don't really use monthly interest rates and the typical standard is a yearly interest rate and then multiply times the 5,000 which is the 25 so we'll do that same thing down here we're gonna say the interest equals this 5,000 times 6% divided by 12 so that's the interest. Now the principal usually is a reduction in principal if we were making payments. And again, I'm formatting this as we will see uh, when we have a loan that has monthly payments. In this case, the, the principal is going to go up. It's an increase in principal. That means that we had 5,000 and now it's increasing to 525. So after one month, we actually owe 5,025 now because this interest has accrued. We're going to have to deal with that, but we're not going to put it into the loan payment payable. We're going to make another account and say, hey, we owe interest in this case of $25 that we have not yet paid. We'll deal with that in a, in a later uh, adjusting entry. So we're going to do the same thing here. And now we're going to say that we have 25, though. The principal goes up times 6%. So it's a, it's a uh, divided by <laughs> divided by 12. So it should be a little bit higher if we put in if we add decimals here we'll note that it went up just a little bit because um because we increased the principal and then if we subtract this out then this minus this would be that and our principal now is going to be this is going to increase by another 25. and then if we keep doing this now note the principal went up a little bit we're going to multiply that times six percent and and then divide by 12 and then divide by 12 and it went up just a little bit again and then we're going to subtract this out so it's going to increase the principal like so now we can copy and paste this formula down it should look very similar if we do it just one time i'm going to highlight these three cells put my cursor right on that little dot and scroll down and it doesn't do exactly what we would want that doesn't look right so if i click on it we're going to say this cell looks right that cell looks wrong this cell moved down i don't want it to move down so how can we fix that we're going to i'm going to delete this now 
we'll put our cursor back on this one and what, we, what we're saying I'm double clicking on that this cell right there I want to keep it the same so in order to do that we use what we call absolute references so that's cell B5 so within B5 we're gonna put dollar signs dollar sign before the B dollar sign before the five the dollar sign does not mean it's a money value it's for whatever reason Excel uses the dollar sign as a kind of a code to say don't move that cell down this basically says do not move the B or the five when you copy and paste the cell so we're gonna say okay and then copy this down so I'm gonna drag it down just one first and then it looks correct so that looks like what we want and so then we're just gonna drag it down to the end and there we have it there's the 5152 which matches what we got here in the Excel formula so this gives us a, a little bit more um, visual of how we got to that number rather than just the formula just kind of spitting that number out at us it gives us a little bit more verification that what Excel did here was correct so we're gonna use this this table and a few different things we're gonna one use it to um, record the interest that will be due the accrued interest that has not yet been paid that we do owe and we're going to uh, use it in order to adjust the short term and long term portion of the loan, which is all short term in this case of the 5000. That's the adjusted entry we will do now. And we'll uh, use this comparison to a more complex loan or a different loan where we do have monthly payments that will have an interest portion and principal portion. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to pull out that 5000 that we're determined was all short term and put it into a short term loan in the current section. Here we are back at our QuickBooks. I'm going to go back to the uh, balance sheet. So here we have our loan payable down here. What we really want is another loan payable up here. We want a short-term loan payable up here. So we need another account. It's just going to be loan payable short-term. Or we can call it loan payable current portion. And we're going to pull that 5000 up here. Now once we do that, that we're not done yet because that we got that other loan in here that may have a short-term portion as well. So we're going to do this one loan at a time and we're going to go to do that we could add the account first so we could go to my accounts uh, down here and then we want to go i'm sorry we want to go to accounting down here and then we got the chart of accounts we want to be on the chart of accounts and then we want to create a new account so i'm going to create a new account and the account is going to be a liability type account so we're going to select the other current liability type of account and then in the detail type we're going to select the loan payable type of account so it's the loan payable and we're going to say it's a loan payable and we're going to call it just to differentiate it the current portion something like that current portion if i could spell it right maybe we don't need portion i'm just going to call it current now this this is again another thing that will just be in terms of your preference whether you want to put current or not when you see it on the balance sheet it'll be under the current section so we won't really need to say it's current because it'll be in the current section if you see it on something like a trial balance however or when you're making a journal entry it might be useful to see the current portion because it's not going to be in the context of a financial statement so it's really up to up to you as to whether you would want uh, how, how exactly you want to name it whether you want to name it current or not or just let it land where it lands it will be in the current uh, section as opposed to the other loan payable we have which is in the uh, long term section so we're going to save and close that and now we're going to make our adjusting entry now no, normally and we will use some debits and credits some journal entries here uh, and so normally you would go up top and you would have the journal entry that you would want to enter this journal entry in the others section so we went to the plus item in other journal entry typically these adjusting journal entries at the end of the time period uh, would require the use of debits and credits they're not kind of like normal transactions that the quickbooks uh, has a form for that you would just do every day and therefore have a form for that quickbooks would just set up and basically have an input screen where we would not need to know debits and credits so if we were to do this we would have to increase the the current portion with a credit which would be uh, the 5000 credit and in the current portion and then debit or decrease the long term for 5000 we're going to try to do it here with just a um, the registers just to see if we if we can do it that way and just to show that it's kind of the same thing to do it that way so this would probably be the easiest way to do it but we're going to work with the registers as long as there's only two accounts 
in the adjust in process because it's it's possible to do that way. So remember that uh, when we when we look at the um, the registers, we usually think of the checking register. So I'm in the accounts over here. We're in the chart of accounts. We usually work with with the check register. But QuickBooks has set up a register for every balance sheet account. So if we're dealing with a balance sheet account, rather than going to the journal entry, we could work with the registers. We have one set up for the loan payable already. So if we go down here, the loan payable, here's the current loan payable. And then we had uh, the long term loan payable. So if we go to the, the long term one, here's the loan payable that we had set up before. It has the 74878 in it. We'll see what's in there now. So I'm going to go to that account. And here's our detail. So this is kind of like our GL. And it has that 74 in it. We need to decrease this one and then put the other side into the short term. So note, we can kind of think of it here without the debits, the credits, we could just say, well, this one needs to go down and the other one needs to go up. Once we get to more than just two accounts affected, then these registers become more confusing than journal entries and I'll just go to the journal entries. But when there's only two accounts, uh, it, it is possible to use these registers. So I'm gonna say that we wanna add a journal entry. Notice there's no really other option here. We have a transfer and a journal entry uh, because that's typically all you really got on a loan payable because it's not a normal transaction as opposed to cash where you'd have different types of things. You can write a check, you can enter an expense and all this other types of options. So we're going to say journal entry and we're going to date the journal entry as the end of the second month 02 28 21 as all kind of adjusting entries are. This is basically an adjusting entry. We're not going to have a payee or a memo. We're going to decrease it by 5,000 and we might want a memo saying this is adjusting entry or something like that at least adjusting entry <laughs> and then we would want to be down here and we're going to say the other side where's the other side going to go to the current portion the other account we just set up so we're going to say this one's going to go down and do whatever you need to do to the other side which is going to be increase the other loan payable we could select that by selecting the drop down and or typing in loan payable and then the current portion current liability as opposed to long-term liability so we want the current loan payable. Then we'll make sure and save that. And then we're going to go back and we could check this out one in the register. So if I go back up to the register and we go and look at that other loan that we set up, which was a liability account down here. It's an order assets, liabilities, equity, income, except here's the current portion. There's that loan payable. And if we select that register, we'll see that it has now appeared here because of, of uh, the other entry that we just made. We can also look at it on the financials as we will. So let's go to the financial statements. We wanna to go to the reports. We wanna to go to the balance sheet. And we're gonna change that dates once again from 010121 to 022821 and run that report. We're gonna scroll back down and we see that in the loans payable, we have the 5,000 there. There's our current portion. And here's our long-term portion that went down. If we click on the current portion, if we select that detail, we will go to what? A journal entry, not, not, the, not the register. And because again, what, the, what we put into the register was a journal entry. So this is what QuickBooks thinks that this is like the default form for something that has no other form for QuickBooks. QuickBooks doesn't have, there's no check that does this. There's no invoice. So it goes then to the, the last kind of resort, which is a journal entry. And we can see that we debit um, the loan payable to decrease it, and we credit the loan payable current portion uh, to increase that amount. Hello, in this presentation, we're gonna talk about an adjusting entry for the loans payable, breaking out the loans payable from one account to two accounts, that the short-term portion of the loan payable and the long-term portion of the loan payable. If you've been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will make an adjusting entry to look at our loans payable accounts, breaking out that short-term portion versus the long-term portion when making financial statements. If you have the backup file, you can restore that backup file by going to the File tab and Restore to this point. We currently have the open windows list open and open in order to open that. We'd go to view at the top and the open windows list item. The only open window we have right now is the home tab. In order to open the home tab, go to the company tab 
and the home tab what we're going to do now are some adjusting entries and in order to do so we will first look at the financial statements and do some adjustments to those financial statement statements in accordance to accepted accounting principles so we're going to go up to the reporting up top we're going to go to company and financial and scroll down to the balance sheet standard we're going to change the date i'm going to do that by going to the date range and work on the date that we are currently working on which is 0101212 so that's january 1st 2021 to february 28th 21. so this is going to be for that two month time period that we are running this report for we're going to select ok and what we're focusing in on here will be the loans payable account. So when we actually present these financial statements to outside users, we typically would need to break out and the current and long term portion of the loan that we have outstanding. So here's our loan right now. There's our loan payable account. It's often useful for us to use one account to, to record it to because that amount will change as we go when we make more payments. So it's good to make a system in terms of how we're just going to make payments to it. And then when we report it or when we want to make decision making uh, on the financial statements, it's useful to have the current portion broken out of this loan amount so that we know how much of it is going to be due relatively soon so that we can make decisions based on that. If we present it also outside the company, we would, we would need to break this number out. If we double click on this number and look at the detail of it, we see that we started with the 22, we took out 50,000, another loan, and then we took out another 5,000 down here. These two, we're gonna say are the same loan that we, we um, took out to get to that 72,000. So we have a one loan at $72,000 in other words. And then we took out this other loan when we purchased furniture and fixture. This is the one we're gonna focus on here. When we put this loan on the books, we put it just into the loans payable account that we have. But now we want to break out the current portion. And we're basically going to say that this loan is just a, uh, a loan that's going to be due within six months and therefore all current. So this is going to be a current loan. Let's take a look at the amortization table just to get an idea of that and how uh, the two loans, how these different loans could be put together. And then we'll just recategorize this loan to the current portion of a loan. These will be our amortization schedule. So this loan, we often just have the terms, but just to give an idea of the loan, we're gonna say it's a $5,000 loan we took out for the equipment. It's gonna be paid in six months and the rate is 6%. We're gonna say that this loan, we're just gonna pay at the end. So we're gonna pay back both the loan and all of the interest at the end of the loan. Note that loans can be set up in many different ways on, in terms of how they're going to, how the interest will be paid, how the principal will be paid. Next time we'll take a look at a loan that's set up more like a traditional loan in terms of a mortgage where we pay back some of the interest and the principal on that 72000 where we will have to break out a short term and long term portion. But this one, we're going to put it all in the short term, but we do want to make some distinction about what is interest and do we have to include interest. And in order to do that, let's look at the amortization table. Many times they don't give us an amortization table when we get a loan, but we can derive it or we can ask our accountant to put one together for us just to see what the kind of interest payments we are looking at. So if we have a $5,000 loan, it's gonna be due in six months and the interest rate is 6%, and we're just gonna pay it all back, interest and principal at the end of the loan, then how much are we gonna to have to pay back? We can do this type of calculation Within Excel, there's a there's a fair value calculation or future value calculation, I should say. And there's a couple ways you can find it. One is you can go to the icon here and type in future value calculation. And it's this future value right here. If you go through that section, you can say OK and go through the, um, the little boxes that they have here. The rate is going to be 6%, but that's per year. And we're going to divide it by 12 for a per month rate because we're paying every month. That's the trickiest part of this calculation or pretty much the trickiest part. Uh, the, num the number of payments is going to be uh, six even though there's only gonna be one payment. And when with this type of loan, again, that's a little bit little bit tricky to, to see. We're gonna make the payments, however, zero. 
So the point of this is saying, hey, there's instead of having a, an annuity where we have constant payments, we're going to use a similar uh, valuation field. We're going to use the same kind of function, but we're going to say that there's six payments of zero just to tell the computer there's six periods that we need to compound the interest over. And then we're going to use this field that we wouldn't really need for an annuity, but we do need uh, when we do this present value of one calculation because of the way we did this um, number of payments and the payments being zero and that present value being the 5,000. So if we go through, if we enter this data, we can see that we're going to have to pay back 5,152. If I want to make that a uh, positive number, then I can go to this formula, I can double click on it. And I just want to flip the sign. So I'm in front of the formula, I'm going to just put a negative. And that basically says, hey, multiply this times negative one. And that'll flip the sign so the payment will be positive. So that's what we're actually going to pay at the end of the time period. So then our question is, of course, how much of it should be short term versus long term on the balance sheets now, given the fact that we're going to pay 5152 at the end of the time period. Just to see this accrual one other kind of way, if we put this into our amortization table, uh, which we'll do in, in the long term as well, we're going to say the payments, again, are zero. The interest per month is going to be 5000 the principal, times the 6% divided by 12, that's the interest rate per month, well, that's going to be the interest per month. And then the reduction in, in the principal is actually going to go up. It's going to be an increase in the principal because uh, the payment is not greater than the interest. So there's going to be an increase in the principal. And in essence, we are owing this uh, 5000 is increasing by the amount of interest. And if we do that, if we continue to do that, we're basically saying there's no payment uh, for each of these periods. We're saying the interest now is going to change. It's going to be this new principal after the first month times 6%. And then we're going to divide that by 12. That would be per year. We're going to divide it by 12 for 12 months. Another 25. We're going to say the principal deduction then, of course, is 25. And this um, and that, this minus that is going to increase it to 5050 and if we continue this process down for the six payments the interest will change uh you up oh, what did i do what did i do i'm going to take this number needs to be an absolute value so we're going to say in b3 going to make that absolute value so when i copy it down it'll take that cell every time and then if we do this and copy that down uh, we should get to this number here. So this number matches. So that's just an idea of the amortization schedule. We'll have to do that and it'll make more sense. It'll be more necessary when we do the long-term portion uh, or the short-term and long-term portion of the long-term debt, which has both a long-term and short-term portion. What we want to see here, what we want to note here though, is that the interest rate, the loan is for 5,000. We know we're going to have to pay within the year 5,152. However, we're just going to be dealing with the 5,000 now because this 152 has not yet been earned. And therefore, even though we know we're going to pay it within the short term time period, within a year, we're not going to uh, include it until it's actually been earned. So if we go back to QuickBooks, then I'm going to close this back out. All we really need to do is move this portion up 5,000 of this loan long, long term loan payable into the current liabilities, which means I need another account up here for uh, the current loan payment. And uh, it needs to be an other current liability type account. And we need to move 5,000 to it. A couple ways we can do this one, the most traditional way is to make a journal entry and we would go to uh, company and make journal entry. And we can we can make a journal entry in that format and we would debit or we would debit the loan payable decreasing it and credit the current loan payable increasing it but if we want to try to do the adjusting entries without um without knowing debits and credits we could try to do this with registers so we will do it with registers we won't try but we'll go to the loan payable register and say that this needs to go down by five thousand and then we'll put the other side to a new account we'll make, which is called other current payable. So we're going to do this without debits and credits, even though they're adjusting entries. 
if we can and what we will be able to so we're going to go to banking we're going to use uh, registers and we're going to go down to the liability accounts and we want this loan payable and say okay so we're going to have a register kind of like a check register it looks like a check register but it's really the register of the loan payable account there's our balance in it we want to decrease it so as of the end of the month as of 022821 we want to decrease this by 5000 and then we're going to move that to the other uh, account a new account we're going to create and it's going to be called um let's call it uh, loan loan payable current portion well let's call it loan payable current uh what happened loan payable current all right and so we're going to say tab and it's going to ask us if we want to add a new account and we do we will set that up then and it's not going to be an expense so make sure we change that drop down that's we'll change this drop down to other current liabilities so we want to make sure it's a current liability and selecting that item everything else should remain the same so we're going to say save and close and we want want to put here that it's adjusting entry so maybe uh, a DJ for adjusting entry and it's going to be to uh, break out current portion of loan something like that make sure to select a tab or enter and make sure we're on the next line and then when we go to the balance sheet it should adjust so if we go to the balance sheet looking in the current portion then we see that 5000 there has been brought up to the current portion double clicking on it we see the 5000 here we see our memo double clicking on that takes us to the register closing this back out closing this back out we scroll back down we see the long term payable here double clicking on that we see that the 5000 has been removed and now we're basically left with the balance of the other loan the long term loan and uh, that's what we're gonna have to deal with next time so we, removed, we removed the one loan that was totally short term the other loan we have in place has a short term and long term portion so that one's going to be a little bit more difficult because we'll just have to remove part of it so now that we've seen one loan that's completely short term versus long term next time we'll try to look at these amortize we will look at these amortization tables and see the portion that needs to be moved when part of it is short term and part of it is long term